Hi, in this video you'll learn about converting from a cumulative distribution function to a probability density function. In other words, in symbolic notation we're going from capital F of X to little f of X. And to do that we have an example. The time X, the random variable X, until the chemical reaction is complete is approximated by a cumulative distribution function. And capital F represents the cumulative distribution function. And just to remind you what capital F is um, with respect to a probability, it's the probability that the random variable x is less than or equal to little x. So if you look over here where x is defined, for x is less than 0, I mean, imagine putting in a value less than 0, such as negative 1. The probability that the reaction time is complete by negative 1 seconds is zero. It's, it's not going to happen, right? I mean, the chemical reactions aren't going to be complete in, in negative time. So for x is less than zero, we have zero probability. Um, if we put a number here in this range, again, let's say uh, in this case x equals 100, um, the probability that the chemical reaction is complete in less than 100 milliseconds um, is given by f of 100, and I would just put 100 in here for x. And going down to the graph, I went ahead and drew the graph of capital F of x before I started the video. And here's about 100, and if you go up to um, the capital F of x graph, you see maybe it's around 60%, right? So the probability, um, the time it takes for a chemical reaction to be complete in less than 100 milliseconds is given by the point on this capital F of X graph. Um, but what we're trying to do in this example actually is go from uh, this cumulative distribution function capital F to the probability density function of X, which is little f of X. So down here, I've actually already drawn in what little f of X is. I haven't computed it for you, but here's a little graph of f of X. And again, x is um, completion time of the reac reaction in milliseconds. So if I wanted to find the probability a reaction time is complete by 100 milliseconds, I could go up here and find the area under the curve between 0 and 100. But I mean, that's what the cumulative distribution function has already been giving us. Uh, if I pick some random value x in this range, let's say you know x is close to 400, if I want to find the area under the curve up to x, I would just go over here to x, wherever that might be then on my cumulative, and go up to the curve, and I would see that probability. So in essence, if you want to find a probability uh, less than or equal to a little value x, that's what your cumulative distribution function can tell you. So um, the last part of the question is what proportion of reactions is complete within 200 milliseconds? Well, again, we could find that by putting 200 into the capital F, or we could find it by integrating the area under the curve up to uh, 200 on little f. So on the next page, I just want to, again, I I'm going to find the probability density function and then find that probability for you two ways. So um, again, this is capital F. This is the cumulative distribution function. So nicely we named it. So it, it, it makes sense with calculus. If you want to find little f, that's just going to be the derivative of capital F. Okay, and this is a fairly nice derivative because this is an exponential function. So this is going to be 0.01 e to the negative 0.01x for x is bigger than or equal to 0. When x's are less than 0, it's 0. So this is what this graph is right here. This is, this is the, an exponential curve, 0.01 e to the negative 0.01x. That's what I've drawn in for you up here. Um, so now if we want to answer this question, we could do it two, two ways. So what proportion of reactions, or what's the probability of reaction time is less than 200 milliseconds? Well, that's just f of 200, capital F of 200, the cumulative distribution function, which I've shown you. If we go up to the curve, I mean, I'm guessing around 85%. Let's go ahead and put 200 in for x in this function. So 1 minus e to the negative 0.01 times 200, which is e to the negative 2, which I figured out beforehand is approximately 0.86. Four, seven. Okay, but now let's see if, if we wanted to use little f um, 
it seems a little bit silly since we're actually just doubling our work, but we could um, to find the probability that X is less than 200 milliseconds. I'm just going to integrate uh, the probability density function then from 0 to 200. Okay, so this is 0 to 200. 0.01e to the negative 0.01x dx. And again, exponential, fairly nice antiderivative. So this is negative e to the negative 0.01x from 0 to 200, which is going to give us a negative e to the negative 2 minus, put 0 in here, a minus, a minus 1 is a plus 1. Oh, excuse me, I did forget the one over here. Otherwise, you were probably wondering. But again, I get the same answer as I did over here. I just forgot to rewrite the one, but I get the same answer. So I, can, I hope you can see, um, knowing the cumulative distribution function and finding a probability of being less than a given value of x, uh, you're already set up nicely to find that. Um, the relationship between the cumulative and the probability density function if I have the cumulative, I'm just going to take its derivative to find the probability density function. And again, I can use that probability density function to find area by integrating. Uh, so you have two choices here. Um, finding f of x after you have capital F of x isn't hard, but if you already want a less than or equal to probability, it, it, you could just stay with the cumulative. So anyway, I hope you see the relationship between the two. I think, I think for me, the picture helps a lot, just so you can keep thinking of the probability density function as I find area. That area is what's graphed on the cumulative distribution function. So I hope that works uh, for you and it makes sense, and uh, we'll talk again.